Chris Nessel here. How you doing? Welcome to the LTR podcast. This is Life Through Rhythm. We are drumming, we are having fun, and we're feeling the energy, the passion, and the lessons we learn with this through going forward on the path. Focus, energy, patience, humility, strength, the grit that it takes to play drums, and, and the expression that happens it's just awesome there's always something new there's always a new mountain to climb with this you're never going to arrive at learning everything it's so cool so welcome to the podcast please sign up for the podcast you can subscribe and leave a review so other people can find this information because we want to serve as many people as possible and feel free to share this with somebody that you think would benefit so today, we have a real connection to life through rhythm. We're going to welcome Mr. Mark Bowden to the podcast. And I'm really lucky to teach Mark's son, Lex, drumming. And he's so talented, such a great guy. And it's so cool seeing him develop in, in the level that he's going at with his drumming. And through Lex, I got to meet Mark and find out that he's one of the world top world-renowned experts on the brain and body language and how they're connected. And this is a real example of life through rhythm because you might say, like, Mark's not a drummer. What does the brain and body language have to do with drumming? It has, like, everything to do with it. This is how we deal with the stress of drumming, you know, being in a, in a situation like, it's almost like public speaking, like if you're in front of a lot of people in a band and an audience situation or just dealing with you know all the different personalities that are that have to do with music and even how we process this information ourselves and body language because drumming is movement and that's one thing I love about drumming and the process of it is it's really the study of motion so I always say how you move is how you groove so our motion creates our sound. So our body language is very connected to how we play drums and how we express ourselves. Because drumming is communication. Drumming is a language. And since Mark Bowden is one of the world's top, top experts in communicating through the body, there is a huge connection with drumming and what you can learn from Mark. And one of the best ways to improve what you do and this is really what the LTR attitude is is like steal from mediums that are not your own so as drummers we can learn from athletes we can learn from chefs we can learn from people like Mark so you're gonna love this one this is amazing at the end of the podcast we went into analyzing some of my favorite drummers body language. So I, I just threw these drummers at Mark, like Stuart Copeland, Carter Bowford, Tony Williams, and he really got inside what their body language was saying and a little bit about what was going on in their minds. And it was amazing to hear Mark's insights on this. You'll just notice me through the whole podcast, just getting my mind blown, being a complete student of what Mark had to say. So I learned so much through talking with him. I'm honored to get to know Mark and to be friends with him. As much of an expert as Mark is, you're able to have a laugh with him and not feel like he's you know, intimidated by all the knowledge that he knows. Such a great guy. Uh, we have to keep a sense of humor on this journey. And one thing with Mark, I've, as I've gotten to know him, uh, we have fun through the learning. So you're gonna really enjoy this. Please welcome to the LTR podcast, Mr. Mark Bowden, and increase what you have to say through your body language onto the drums and into life. Let's have fun. Let's do this. Thanks for doing this. My pleasure. We're here. Do you have your own podcast? Uh, no, I don't. No, I'm on lots of other people's. You're on lots yeah, of other Yeah, maybe people's. do like sometimes like three a week. So why have your own? No, you don't. When you can just be on other people's. It's, it's like the cottage theory. Yeah, it's, like, yeah. it's exactly yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> just visit my like, friends. Yeah, cottage. just like people with expensive cottages need you to turn up to, yeah. to verify that they actually live like yeah, right. that. People who have podcasts need you to turn up to verify that they have. Yeah. A, oh, you have a podcast. You're making my podcast. I'm making your podcast credible podcast. Yeah. By, <laughs> by actually showing up. Otherwise, it'd be you on your own. Yeah. <laughs> 
No, that's which is probably, okay. That's a ramble. That's <laughs> it's a you ramble. talking to you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks for doing this, man. Yeah. Um, drumming is a language, and I, I'm honored to teach your son Lex. Yeah. And you've kind of seen this whole crazy drumming thing. Yeah. And I'm fascinated by, like Miles Davis used to say, I can tell how someone's going to play by the way they carry themselves, yeah. the way they walk. Yeah. And I love to teach this concept of like, you are the instrument. You know, if, if you, how you move is how you groove. Like yeah. if you were to play uh, in the air and just put something in front of you, it's going to, the sound is an extension yeah. and it's going to, and there's a story about John Bonham and he, uh, his kid was going to a birthday party and they were in this house and the other kid had a, like a kid's drum set and Bonham kind of went in the basement and was like, just playing this kid's set. But everybody upstairs was like, that's that's Zeppelin. Like, it sounds like Led Zeppelin. How does he, how is he making that kid's drum set? So it's like we are the sound. So oh, really? Hear... So, so it's like the in, the instrument is not as important as the player. Exactly. Like a, a player can play mm -hmm. any yeah terrible instrument. You said it in five words. Right. And I'm, I'm it in <laughs> yeah. like a hundred words. So yeah. That's why exactly. you need guests on your yeah, podcast. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So uh, yeah, just. just Everything I've learned from you and your books and, yeah. and uh, your videos and body language and the brain, uh, I think it's so important in drumming and just life. So I guess we could start with like when you sit to play drums yeah. and you're expressing yourself, um, are there any parallels that you've kind of thought of with like how you carry yourself? Yeah. Um, now you were eating lobster last night. Yeah, yeah, I've I've heard, lobster, yeah. I don't know if you've heard Jordan Peterson. Or I have. About. Yeah, you know that his take on the st yeah, the like sternum lobster. out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, it, and in other words, your body language affects your physiology. Absolutely. Yeah. Or, or your mental state. Yeah. So I would say um, what interests me most around how body language might affect drumming is you're often saying tension is the enemy. Mm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And so we all have tension and so and, and for me there's no bad body language there's just results that you wanted or didn't want mm. so there is no bad tension there's just a result that you wanted or didn't want mm. and i think in body language i think about tension states so literally your muscles have tension in them like i can tense up my fist here or i can relax it mm -hmm. so at the moment i the tension in my hand i would call um that's like a sleep Mm -hmm. This is like the tension you'd have if you were actually so and I can do it in my whole body yeah. yeah, I can then put more tension in it and I'll have the tension of what I'll call cool Which is there's a there's a little bit of Tension enough that I'm not asleep <laughs> but a little bit so I'm thinking you know if I was playing right now if I was playing drums How would it be useful to be in cool might be? Might be, really might be not. Here, but yeah, really but it's like I don't know whether I'd even get to the to the symbol on time. Yeah. But 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 psychologically, in that tension state, it wouldn't actually matter. Mm -hmm. I'd never go. Ah, oh, I'd miss the. It'd just be like, yeah, whatever. Whatever. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so after after cool, then there would be. Let's call it. Um, Let's call it, you know, put it, you put a little more tension in it and now I'm slightly more alert, but there's no sense of urgency, but I could get stuff done. So now as I'm talking to you now, I'm going to call this manager. Yeah. Because now I'm just managing, like stuff would be on time, but it wouldn't be urgent, but yeah, it'd be, yeah. it would be there. Yeah. yeah. And if I put even more tension into me now, I'm in a state that I'd now call, is there a bomb in the room? Ah, yeah. red. Right. It's like it's not that there is, but like is, is there? <laughs> so, so would this tension be kind of? It's curious now. This tension is like curious. Yeah. It's curious. Now I'm going to go to a tension state, which I would call there is a bomb in the room. Okay. And now, now look what's happened to my body, and like, yeah. and would this tension be be useful? Like, I'm even scared of like <laughs> even hitting something. Yeah. Now. Yeah, so now, now I'm going to go to the tension of total tension, which is the bombs exploded. Well, there's even one level. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so, you know, imagine me trying to play a kit like, like this. Now, but it might have something, it might have something to it. 
you know, yeah. might have something to it of those. I'm thinking about some kind of rhythms where you might want to go, oh, I don't want to play there. Right. And, and that kind of tension could be really interesting for, that's interesting for rhythm. So that's the first place I would start with body language, behavior, and, and playing an instrument, especially one that's so attached. That's why to the, I wanted to have, yeah. I wanted to talk to you today. Yeah. So how many levels are there? Is that, is that uh, so, so, so I would say there's, there's uh, sleep. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so that's one. Yeah. Then I would say there's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Then I would say I'm so put another one in now called neutral. All right. Which is uh, there's a sense of absolutely no urgency and uh, absolutely it's not cool and it's not urgent. It's just there. Mm, just there. Then there's yeah. manager, whereas now I want to get everything accurate. So there's a little bit of urgency, but again, I'm, I'm, I'm trying, these are just, uh, t triggers. These words are just triggers to trigger mm -hmm. my body into a certain tension state, mm -hmm, tension mm -hmm. level. So after manager, I'd say, is there a bomb in the room? So now it's, it's more curious. It's more forward. And then after that, I would say it's, there is a bomb in the room. And, and, and so there's more backing that sense of the tension wants to back you away from stuff. And after that, it's totally it's exploded. Off. It's yeah. just gone off. <laughs> but when you get really good with these tensions, you can go from one to the other. I can go from, there is a bomb in the room to cool. So you're talking about awareness. Yeah, it's awareness. So, yeah. so sitting at a kit, I, I, what I would imagine is I'd be able to sit at a kit and go, hang on, where am I? Right. The, oh, I'm, there's a little bit of sense of hmm. the bomb's gone off in my like, yeah. is that and now is that good for me and, and can I go to just can I just be a manager right now maybe mm. that's useful or, or, or I want to be that mm. curious yeah. tension that's so cool I never thought of it that way uh, I did as your son has played in many student concerts yeah like, there was one student concert where one of the students was walking her to the stage this is you know awesome drummer prepped and, right. but it was her first time performing yeah and i was why and i didn't expect this reaction i'm walking her to the stage and and she's just almost starting to cry right tears in her eyes and so it's the bomb either yeah the bombs went off bombs gone off and she she was just sitting down in the yeah. kit and i was like what well, i tried yeah. to crack a joke to kind of release some of the yeah. tension but i think as drummers i want to talk to you about like stress because yeah. sometimes i say to people like like we talk about tension drumming Drumming's stressful. You're using both both hands, right. both arms. Right. And of course, in life, like unless you're in your basement in a, you know, in a ball, you're going to be hitting some stress. Yeah. And stress is good. Yeah. Because it's going to push us to another level, and especially in music, you know. But you got the bass player, and he's like, okay, we're going to cut the bridge, you know, and he's like trying to give the instructions, and you're trying to remember the grooves, and you're trying to play. You're trying to play. <laughs> so, Maybe. Like I'm just trying to play drums. Yeah. And I, and I and understand your language at the same exactly. same time yeah, and then really maybe your drink just spilled right and now your pedal's wet and <laughs> right. maybe and the lights are on and the audience is there and it's like it's it's a it's it's fun right but it's a, it's a stressful situation yeah i used to so, play a lot of guitar and like a string would break yeah. and you're in the middle of something and a string uh -oh. breaks like okay what am i going to do now because you'd be going that's a really important string yeah <laughs> Like, Couldn't you know, have been the high. You know, this is in the key of this song's in the key of D. <laughs> and, that. and and that's like that's a critical <laughs> string that just it's went for that string. string. Yeah. <laughs> so How do you trying to work out what am I gonna do about this? Yeah. So sometimes like before and I know I've uh experienced this is like before you even play, you're in a stage that you don't want to be in. Yeah. Like one of the higher stages. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so yeah. so I would like I would put that in the in the realm of fight and flight. Which yeah. the first part of that is the freeze response. So fight and flight, you know, often people go, oh, it's fight and flight. It's a much bigger response than that. The first thing when you get into fear is freeze. Yeah. And that's instinctual because that's the most economical way of surviving is to do nothing, is to uh. stand perfectly still and stiff so that the predator just walks on by. Yeah. Yeah. Like do nothing. And, yeah. and you see that a lot with, with stage performances. You see people and you go, okay, they've gone into freeze. Wow. Yeah. Now imagine, you know, how do you... You can't really freeze. How do you play, how do you play drums <laughs> when your whole body has gone it's into, the, bomb, yeah, the bomb's gone off? Yeah. Like, isn't it's... You watch Planet Earth, to, uh, 
either one or two on Netflix. You ever seen that? Is that that's the one where that's the nature sh yeah. show? Yeah, there's I have, one yeah. on planet yeah. or two. Two is on next level. Like right. The, probably the cameras are like yeah. You know, they're just getting this stuff on film. And there's what, what animal was it? It's like a scorpion's walking by or something, and the yeah, and the animal just went oh, and just yeah, let it go by. Right by and, yeah, I think it was a mouse, and then it, they went okay. Yeah. <laughs> so the next response, the if, if the if the scorpion keeps coming towards you, yeah, yeah, and it's not going away, so your freezing hasn't worked, right. then it's then it's retreat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, then it's the so it's it's flight before fight because again, it's the most economical thing. If you get into a fight and you get damaged, even if you win the fight, you might still die because you were damaged enough. Right. So it's most economical to try and run away. Oh, I see. Now, sitting at a, in an instrument, that means you're now backing off from the... Literally, you'll see the pe person back off. Yeah, they're going to... Their, their chin yeah. will tuck in, their head will turtle into their right. shoulders. They'll minimize the size of their body. Yeah. Yeah, and, they're, and they're, now they're, they're backing away from the... Or slow music. down. Or slow down. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because again, it's they're in a retreat response. <laughs> shut down. The shut system down. shut down. Yeah. Now, now the next. Now, if the predator doesn't go away, and for for a, for a stage performance, the predator is the audience. You look at yes. that audience, and and your brainstem, your instinct, has this form of counting. It goes one, two, three, four, lots. It can't do five. <laughs> so it just goes. The moment it's seen more than four people, it's just gone. Wow, that's a lot. And then it goes, how will I predict their behavior if they're for me or against me? And it just goes, I can't, okay, there's too yeah. many people. Yeah. So then it defaults to a negative. It just goes, let's do the worst possible scenario. They're going to kill me. Yeah, defaults to a negative. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so now you're in fight and flight mm -hmm. very, very quickly. And it's the not knowing. It's the brain going, I don't know. I can't predict this. Mm -hmm. Let's predict it's gonna be bad. And you can do all kinds of psychological stuff like, well, but I did a gig last week and they loved me. It doesn't no. care. It just goes, it just goes, yeah, yeah, that was last week. You don't understand now. And well, that's prefrontal cortex. Absolutely, trying, yeah, it's, trying yeah, to, yeah. it's trying to get in there and, and, yeah. and convince it and go, yeah, but you know, look. You're okay. You're okay. <laughs> it goes, no, no, no. Because yeah. it's seen more than five people and it, it can't predict, and it can't predict the behavior. Yeah. So now you're getting this physiological response of, yeah. of, of freeze, flight, the audience are going nowhere. <laughs> so now you're into fight, which might mean you're starting to get ag aggressive with the music, with the other band members, with your instrument. Like too aggressive. Too aggressive. I mean, there yeah. might be a degree of let's, let's, I mean, you know, again, there's no bad behavior. There's just results that you wanted yeah, or didn't want. I love that. And, and, the, and the aggression could be useful. I, yeah. I've known some really good aggressive musicians. I've known some that then flip into an aggression whereby they literally start destroying the music. Wow. And it's like, oh, yeah, they're, they're, they, they've, got, they've, huh. they've gone now. They're... they're they're being, Fighting. they're beating up the music. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, like, wow. Yeah, and it's like somebody being um, with, a, with a social disorder <laughs> in the same band as you. It's just like, oh, we're gonna have to let them mm -hmm. get through that. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. that, that's, especially if they're the lead. <laughs> It's like okay, yeah, we have to so ride. Got to ride. Got to go with. Got to <laughs> ride through that because because <laughs> you can't go. You know what? Calm down. It's going to be okay. No, it's, it's happened. <laughs> it's happened. Well, I, I remember one time I was trying to get as much experience as I could. Yeah. In my earlier days, I guess, and uh, I got asked to sub for a big band. Yeah. Okay. It was only a rehearsal. Like, a jazz, like a jazz like big a, band. A jazz okay. band. Yeah, yeah. Like okay. A traditional, which yeah, yeah. don't yeah. exist anymore. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and they rehearsed those bands because there's just so many people in the song so they're like sure. whether it's a gig or not it's like yeah. all right every tuesday night and somebody could make it they asked me and i'm like oh, i've never done this and i'll probably never get you know there hardly are any big bands so i'm gonna do this this is cool you get the experience and i can i can read and i you know yeah. i, I kind of know but i got there there's like 30 people or whatever and the director's like, all right, everybody, get your charts, uh, you know, sat and dolled. Uh, and he's like, all right, a one, two. And I'm like, well, I didn't yeah. have it up. And I'm like, yeah. okay. Yeah. And I'm trying to, okay. And he's like, a one. Okay. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> and there's something in Big Ben where the, it's so big, the sound traveling actually affects the drummer's experience. Yeah. So it sounds yeah, yeah. like you're 
off time, but you you have you have to learn to push through it. Yeah, yeah. Because they need that driving the band. For sure. I didn't know that. But <laughs> just I'm just, so I'm trying to read, and I'm like, whoa, this is and the directors, you know. And then the bass player starts doing this. So he's sitting, you know, across from me and he, he starts stomping his foot. Like he's, and I'm like, what does he do? I don't even know that he's, he's just kind of looking at me and doing this. I'm like, is he having like a, <laughs> like some problem with his leg? Like what's, is he stomping on a bug or something? And he was telling me I was dragging. Right. So what happened was I was going into the, I guess, uh, flea or something it was just so much for right. me to handle right 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 i just started going and just i was like not you know i just didn't well, you're in a foreign that. world For, total foreign, foreign world yeah. and be, just being thrown in oh, a yeah. friend friend of mine old friend of mine charlie round turner who now plays keyboards with midjur and ultravox uh he i remember him we, we used to live in the same house and he came back from one rehearsal and he was playing with the count basie Big band, obviously Count Basie is not around anymore, but the, the Count Basie big band was still going. That's a big deal. It's a big deal. He's a, yeah. key, he's a p- pianist. Yeah, so yeah. he's doing the Count Basie stuff. So he's a good player, like he's a really good player, but he's yeah. never played with the Count Basie big band, kind of being Count Basie. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so, and there's the band leader. So he turns up to the rehearsal, and literally on each song, the band leader would go, um, three, four. <laughs> It wouldn't even do one, two, three, four. It would literally go three, three four. four. And the whole band, they were used to playing with each other. The whole band would, you imagine, wow. Count Basie big bands making a big, loud noise. And Charlie's like, whoa, what the? Like, literally, this thing is, is it's a runaway train. Yeah. And he's got a, he's got to do the splink. <laughs> was that on stage or rehearsal? I, or this was a rehearsal. But I, I remember him kind of coming back from this rehearsal <laughs> with this slightly traumatized look yeah. on his, going, yeah, the guy just goes, goes, you know, three, four, and we're in. Three, four. Three, four. <laughs> See, I got, I got the one, two, three. Four. You got the one, two, so <laughs> this guy's literally going three, four, and the whole thing's in, and he's like, what the, oh what the hell's gosh, going man. on? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I remember the other thing I remember from this story was, was the, the, the advice that the band leader would give him after each, each song was mainly just, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a kick, it's a hit. <laughs> it's just like, man, it's just a kick and a hit. Just like, it's a kick, it's a hit, it's a swing. It's like, okay, that's my, that's my note for it. Yeah. The note on everything was, a, was a, it's a kick, it's a hit, it's a, it's just, it's a swing. So, okay, yeah, I kind of get it's a swing. It's just like, <laughs> I'm not swinging with the rest yeah. of the world. So yeah, yeah, that that well, uh, that's the highest level. That's that's oh it. God. Yeah. So so to finish off this this thing about fight and flight, the last part of that is is the play dead response. If you're not, if you haven't beaten, if you haven't beaten the the enemy through fight, and that so you're getting beaten up. The next thing is play dead, where the body go, the the blood drains from you. So that's not head. freeze. No, freeze starts. Freeze, oh. flight, fight. Faint. Oh, faint. The faint response, which is the idea is, is you play dead for the predator because if they think, if the predator thinks you're ill or mm-hmm. already dead, mm-hmm. just diseased in some way, it knows it shouldn't eat you. Mm. So there's some, there's some reptiles, some lizards that uh, if, you, if you bother them enough, <laughs> then they go into their fight and flight routine, they'll flip over and some blood will trickle out of their mouth. Oh, they make themselves spit blood and, and, <laughs> and go, so basically you go, ah, oh, it's dead, it was, it was, I didn't even touch it. And yeah. so it must have some kind of yeah. virus and I shouldn't eat that. Wow. Yeah. So that's kind of like, I, I can't do this anymore. I, can't. I just, I just, yeah. I just want to. Yeah, but I mean, you could still keep on playing. Like I've given but it up would be like them. the Living Dead. Yeah, <laughs> it would be like Zombie Player. I've seen that. I'm before, sure you've seen it. And yeah. I've kind of experienced. They're that, not yeah. there, so you'll have you, you or you've you well, flo- you often get disassociation, which is you you float off somewhere else. Well, it's complete overwhelm, right? Oh, uh, totally overwhelm. Okay. Yeah, yeah, complete overwhelm to the extent that you might even feel like you're watching yourself playing because you you don't want to be there right now it's too painful it's tapping out yeah it's like, too painful for you to be i mean you're still playing yeah but you aren't there anymore wow now it doesn't mean you might not be doing playing drums okay yeah <laughs> but like you're not at the gig anymore your mind has gone somewhere more pleasant 
huh. which is not there right now. Well, sometimes it can be like, like I heard uh, Taylor Taylor Hopkins from Foo Fighters. Yeah. And I heard the story and he would, he would uh, like come, yeah, like come off stage and just head in his hands like, oh man, it, I think Dave was like, What's up, man? We just had this <laughs> killer up? show. I'm, I'm in a band with the greatest drummer in the world. Oh, totally. <laughs> and I play drums. Yeah, he's... well, <laughs> yeah. that's another thing, I would be like, too. how good, yeah. how good was <laughs> yeah. I? Because I'm in. <laughs> yeah. And, well, Dave was, and they're and fans of each other. Yeah, yeah, sure. And, and, and Taylor would just be like, uh, man, that was terrible. You know? And, yeah. Uh, Dave's like, no, it was, it was good. You know? <laughs> and uh, yeah, I think sometimes... I guess we have those. You're playing, and you're like, I just don't want to be here. It's right. And but meanwhile, it's like. Meanwhile, you got to complete you're a, a song. You got to complete a song, and you might actually be doing better than you think you, you're doing. You might well be doing better, yeah, because yeah. That, that part of that might be imposter syndrome. I don't know whether you've ever had that. A lot of top performers have imposter syndrome, which is oh, like yeah. I don't deserve to. They will, of course, they will. I'm sure you've done it. You've sat down with a group, and you've gone, oh, they'll, they're about to find out. They'll find out that I can't play drums. Or who am I to be? <laughs> who am I to be with? Yeah. yeah, and I'll get caught at some point. You know, the 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 singer or the guitarist is going to the lead is going to turn up. to me and go, man, yeah. man, you can't <laughs> you can't play drums, can you? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. And that horrific yeah, worry, and again, all that talk of yeah, but I was great last week. You can't mm -hmm. tell yourself that that doesn't work. Mm -hmm. That doesn't work. But you know, it, one way one way to countermeasure all of this is to think about. How, what's the tensions in my body? How does my body feel? And what are the tensions and how does it feel when I'm performing well? When I've, when I've played drums really well, mm. like what, how am I sitting, how am I, and just record those things. And can you put on the body language of that? So you're almost, uh, it's that whole, isn't Amy Cuddy? Where yeah. it's like body, body physiology before state. Absolutely, so you can trigger state, the yeah. state through, through yeah. the environment. Like environments trigger states all the time. Yeah. Yeah. So, so one of the best indicators of your performance will be the environment that you're in. Mm -hmm. Like I know I could probably put you in environments where you wouldn't behave like this. Mm -hmm. You might be more uh, self-conscious or less self-conscious. You might be louder. You might be quieter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, you know, I guess uh, an example might be if I put you in a church, I bet you get quieter. Mm -hmm. You know, I bet you you start talking like this to me. Yeah, it's like, well, where, where's Chris gone? Yeah, yeah. No, Chris is still here. I just I'm doing a podcast. I'm just doing right. a podcast yeah. <laughs> in a church. <laughs> it's like nothing happened. It was the environment that triggered that in you. So, yeah. and we we are the environment for our brain, and we can tell our body what to do. I can tell myself, look, I just told myself to have less tension in my body. I can tell myself now to be in the tension state of curiosity. Relax. You know, so, is there a bomb in the room? I can tell myself to go to cool. Interesting. So, yeah. you know, if, I, if, I'm, if I'm playing well, what, one of the things I might want to do as I'm playing is going, like, how am I holding myself? This is going well. I'm enjoying this. How am I holding myself right now? Rather than go, how am I thinking? Mm. right now mm -hmm. and, and then go when I sit down at the, at the drums can I instantly reproduce and try and reproduce that that body from the yeah from, from, the, from the last time yeah you know rather than going can I have the mind but the from mind the body state? to the mind rather from the body to the mind, mind to rather than yeah. now it's not that you can't do from the mind to the body yeah it's just in my experience it's not the best intervention no, it's not the most economical and quickest the quickest is body first well and like you said the limbic brain overrides that anyway right? yeah yeah for sure yeah you're trying to do a countermeasure to that Correct. that primitive yeah. Yeah. brain yeah. the neocortex doesn't yeah. get heard by that yeah <laughs> primitive brain the, the primitive brain is supplying its oxygen so it's like it's, oh, there's yeah. a hierarchy there yeah, yeah. So, the, so the the neocortex is going. No, you were great. It's okay. You were great last week. And the, and the primitive brain is going. No, sorry, we've gone into fight and flight. You don't count anymore. And actually, I'm going to cut off your bl blood supply. Blood supply, yeah. I was just say <laughs> because that, you're yeah. not being helpful right now. Well, there's some sad stories about uh, you know buildings that have burned down and just people trying to claw out of the walls right. when they're you know and literally trying to go through a wall when the exit sign was. 
you know, if you, it's because of the blood supply being for sure completely cut off. From yeah, the fight and flight, fight and flight. You won't think critically. Yeah, you'll go back to uh, instinct. Why? Because yeah. it's trying to save your life right now. Yeah, and and it's got yeah. five hundred million years of that working. Yeah. Like, otherwise, you otherwise we wouldn't be sitting <laughs> here. Like it's the fight and flight system is working across a huge range of organisms. Yeah. For the yeah. last five hundred million years or so. Yeah. So it totally works. Yeah. But it doesn't necessarily work in in situations where you could think your way no. out of it. It just cuts off that the blood supply to that thinking, which is why things like short term memory goes when you're under stress. Like, like you like I knew this song. <sighs> I, I, and I don't know where I am now. There's some statistic for that, like, like, in, like a border guard is kind of like, like where were you, you know, stress. Right, right, like, right, right. Did where I steal this car? I don't even know uh, anymore. Yeah. All right, that's a bit suspect. No, I literally where have I, forgotten. I can't remember the name where of the do I place. Live? What's yeah. your name? Uh, uh, yeah. Mark? <laughs> it's like, what is it? I mean, what? Yeah. Yeah, because it's like, I can't even remember my own name yeah. anymore. So, yeah, stress, stress cuts off will the, do extraordinary... Yeah. Things. I think the main thing is, is, is that in my experience, thinking your way out of it doesn't help. I <laughs> Makes agree. it worse. I agree. Deciding on the body that will most likely countermeasure the stress mm. and, and deciding to have that body and, and deciding well before the stress happens. Yeah. It's no, it's no good. You've got to think, you've got to think, you've got to create the body way before the stress. As in muscle memory yeah. technique, which is... Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So, so before walking on stage... Uh, and as you know, I do a lot of stage work. I'm, I'm on stage a lot talking to audiences. I've already started the body language of confidence. Oh, cool. Yeah. How, how, how early do you start it? Uh, five I'm minutes? No, pretty much when I wake up in the morning. Whoa. Yeah, yeah. When I wake up in the morning, I'm like, okay, I'm doing a speech at 10. Like game day. I'm now of... starting the body language of confidence. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know and, that. And, and, there's, really and, there's, and I also have kind of rituals of what I wear and... Again, because I don't want to, uh, I know I'm dealing with stress and I don't need to add extra stress of like, well, what do I wear? So yeah. there's a uniform. Like I've got a uniform that I What are some of the other rituals that you have? Uh, I always wear red socks. You I got them on for I've the podcast? I only have red socks. Yes. I only have red socks. Uh, sometimes if I'm not feeling like I'm in a performance situation, I won't wear socks. And that's yeah. kind of my signal to myself of like, you're relaxing yeah. now. Yeah. If somebody notices you on the street, like you don't, you, you know, you don't have to perform for them. Mm -hmm. Like, but you know, no red, sock, the red socks indicate to me, okay, you, you, you need to be on. You're, you're in the public eye. You need to be on. You're in performance. Wow. Yeah. Trigger, triggers are huge. Yeah. So the, but the external triggers Yeah. rather than <clears throat> I got to, I gotta think, think myself my, into yeah. a. I'm not saying you shouldn't do that. Yeah. I just don't see it working as well as external triggers. I agree. Yeah. Wow, it's fascinating. I was. I played. Uh, there's a drum duet thing that I've done uh, with a great drummer, Aubrey Dale. Okay. And it's called Drumnasium. Yeah, two yeah. drum sets yeah. together make all the noise. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. And we played uh, Breakfast Television in Toronto. Okay. It's, so it's like get there at 4:30 a.m. Yeah. kind of thing, right? Sound check. And this was when. I think they were try. They had a new studio, yep. so it was new and the, everything was new. So they we got their setup, and then they, you know, it's like five a.m. or something, and they're at five fifteen, and they're like, "You just run through your thing. We're gonna like check some levels and like in this bright stu Once you're set up, it feels amazing to play in the yeah, morning. Sure, as you you know, yeah, Lex, yeah. Lex gets that yeah. with his morning lesson. Yeah, and uh, so we're in the studio. The lighting's cool. I'm looking over at Aubrey and like, yeah, man, we're in breakfast television. It's freaking <laughs> awesome. We're jamming, you know, it's it, and we got our coffee and it's it's and we run it through, and we're like, this is on, this is awesome. Like we're relaxed, we're jamming. We're like this is gonna be really cool. Yeah. And they're like, all right, guys, you ready? Yeah. Uh, Sixty seconds. Yeah. Right? Live okay? TV. Live TV. <laughs> yeah. And then they're Can't like, I can do it again. No. And then, <laughs> and then they're like, okay, we're 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 right. on. And they're like, uh, and then the announcer turned to that, you know, those big TV cameras, and they said, all right, Toronto. Here we are, we're gonna wake up with some drums. Uh, you know, grab your coffee, blah, blah, blah. Drumnesium, take it away. And they go like that, and the big cameras go like that. And then, like, what do we do the song? And I remember feeling like it did not feel good. Right, like, right, it's like, right, right. It's like, we got through it, but uh, 
it just I'm like we just played this like eight minutes ago right and it was a, like a completely different experience right. because that fight or flight thing kind of yeah like kicks live TV it gets me every time as well okay, live TV yeah. it's, it's like it's like you sit yeah, down with the interviewer it's, no and it's like oh we're about to go live and we can't <laughs> I can't go I can't go actually I, I kind of said that wrong so yeah. let's, can, we, let's, uh, can we go back and, and re-record we no, this. Yeah. no there's none of there's none of that yeah. which means so for me what I have to do is go I I've just given away any chance of this being perfect this is not about perfection right this is about <laughs> what I yeah. do. this is about getting to the end <laughs> like I always do, I, I do when I'm training other speakers they're like what do I what should I focus on I'm like getting to the end finishing focus on the finish I like that. Go well, for perfection the finish. is a bad idea focusing on that right it's like Right, because a lot of people are like, oh, you know, be in the moment. I'm like, no, get, move on. That moment mm. will have gone. <laughs> the like moment that, yeah. you think you're it, it's like, it's, it's yeah. gone, it happened. Uh, you know, finish. Yeah, yeah. You know, get to, the, get to the end, head for the end of this. That's what we did. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> and I, I've been lucky, like, I, I was self-taught in drums. And I think it's an advantage to my teaching now of having done everything. Like, right. I like what you said. There's no wrong or right. There's only consequences. Right. And it's like, okay, try squeezing a stick and getting blisters and try playing for two hours and right. see, see how that works right. out for you. Yeah, you know, yeah. It's like, yeah. that's not a good consequence. Yeah. And, and how good are you at playing the next day? <laughs> Correct. I remember yeah. doing, you know, playing, oh, playing, I didn't used to play bass a lot, but I play it now and again. Yeah. And uh, yeah, just how wrecked my fingers would be the next, it's like i would you know if i had to play the next day that would really hurt yeah like, i've got to find a different way there must be a different way yeah, of doing right. it. or i need to do this more often there has to be yeah, yeah. and there's a story I, I think you might have heard me tell lex like uh uh this is a drummer in uh, bruce springsteen uh, uh max uh, max weinberg okay and he's in the 80s you know born in the usa none of my young students they're like okay you know, fine, but imagine how huge that was yeah. in 1984 or whatever, right? Yeah, that's the biggest thing. Biggest thing ever. Yeah. Probably Michael Michael Jackson level, right? And yeah. uh, Max had this gig in the band, and he, but he, I guess he was self-taught, squeezing the sticks. And uh, Bruce plays these like four-hour shows, three, four, which he still does to this day. And Max just got cramps. And he had to get his tech to electrical tape the <laughs> stick to his hand just yeah. to like get to the end. Yeah. And he ended up going to this uh, incredible teacher, Jim Chapin, yeah. who I was lucky to also spend a bit of time with. And he's like, help, I'm going to lose this gig. Like I need, you know, I need help with the technique. And he taught him like the molar stroke, yeah. which is using momentum, letting the stick bounce. Yeah. And happy ending, Max still, still plays with Bruce now. Right. You know, and, and just, and now you watch the YouTube videos and it's just like flawless technique. Right. So would you say, uh, you know, watching, I mean, you've seen me teach lectures. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. So we, technique is how you move, study yeah. movement. Yeah. And as we say, tension is the enemy. Yeah. So it's training, even though my limbic system brain wants like, sure. Whoa. Wants to go into fight and flight. Yeah. Fight or flight. <laughs> yeah. But I, through the hours of repetition, right. like the boring, mundane right. training, you know, I always say like, like sternum out, yeah. you know, and, and head out, yeah. B breathing. And right. let's, let's talk about breathing too. Yeah. And so therefore, when the stress comes at you, which it will. Right. <laughs> right. It's not in drumming. It's going to be your uh, physiology saves you. Right. So, would you so well, so people could do all kinds of stuff around trying to breathe better you know, and concentrate on their breathing, I would say concentrate on the, on the body and the breathing will work itself. Like oh, you think, cool. yeah. so when you go under stress and pressure, you're going to, you're most likely going to minimize, you're going to minimize the mm. space that you, you take up because you want the, you don't want the predator to see you. Oh, good yeah? point. So it's and a now, bit of a slouch. So like coming in. Come in tight, cut, especially protect these areas here. These are, oh, these yeah. are delicate areas vital, of the body. Vital uh, crunch in at the stomach. Yeah. And so now let's, you're, let's do this. Now you're, now you're drumming. We can see you. So <laughs> yeah. try this. Now you're kind of drumming like, like this, but you know, again, it's, it won't necessarily be terrible. Try this, Lex. 
crunching and crunching in. <laughs> yeah, I mean, actually, it doesn't you know, feel good, does there's it? Something <laughs> kind of like, I don't know. Might there might be something good about it? Yeah, you know, ducking and diving, <laughs> trying to you know. But you know awesome. what happens when you maximize a little bit more? Well, notice how your chest cavity is already opened up, so your breathing is automatically going to be different. Mm -hmm. So I would never say to you, "Hey, let's work on your breathing." Mm. I would go, let's work on you maximizing in that space of the kit rather than minimize. Well, then the body knows it's safe. Right. And then it breathes accordingly. Right? It's going gonna, it's <clears throat> gonna to start breathing like something that's safe rather than something that is, we, we, is not safe. Yeah. Yeah. It is uh, at risk. So it's about risk. Yeah. We, we look out and we go, okay, that world is risky. Mm -hmm. In a risky world, we should minimize. And if that doesn't work, I'll get really aggressive, right. which is different from, that's different from maximizing the space. It's like now you're, now let's again, see it, let's some, see it, Lex. See, see the, Too much. The, the, the totally aggressive drummer. There you go. <laughs> right, so it's like his face kind of screws up <laughs> yeah. and, and yeah, like. It's, just, it's in the wrist more than it's in the arm. Okay, so like the wrist gets like. Yeah. Uh, stab, aggressive. stab. Yeah, and I, like if I put a lot of tension in there, I can't do that a lot. If I, if I'm, if I right. make it loose, mm -hmm. like that's that could go all day. Yeah, loose. yeah, yeah. So yeah. I think there's there's maximizing, minimizing, and then there's all of those techniques that you're talking about. I think which are about the economy mm -hmm. of the movement, mm -hmm. knowing that the the stick can do some of the work on its own. It doesn't yeah. need you. Yeah. Like if you yeah. just let it drop, it'll bounce a bunch of times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like knowing that that that's you don't have to you. bounce it. Physics will do. Well, that's trust, we'll that right? You. Right. I guess, like, yeah, trusting in the preparation and right. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I see what you mean, like having breathing training. But if you're there, what well, you're breathing. Yeah, we yeah. could, we could, we could I can stand up and do lots of breathing training with you, yeah, yeah. and then you get under stress and pressure. It's like, what happened to our breathing? Oh, I forgot about it because that'll be in short-term memory. Yeah. So you'll forget what, and that's what happens with stage performance. People forget all the stuff that they've trained in because it's in their head, it's not embodied. So is, the, is, is that where the over-preparation would come in? Well, it would be the, Public speaking the, it would be the too, intell right? in, in, intellectualization of the, of the training. So it's an idea that I have in my head rather than something that I've physically done. So you'll forget the intellectual idea yeah. more likely than, than you will forget the thing that's now Im embodied. Like if you yeah. practice being more open, and that's what's great about you teaching open oh, hand. Open hand, yeah. Is, yeah, is, yeah. Is, is that's already closed me off. You know what? I'm already, I never I'm even, already constricted in my I chest. I never even thought of that. Like that is now helping my breathing. Like that's a better breathing position than that. Mm. Wow, I never thought of that. Yeah. Because you're... Well, because you've constricted hot. your chest. You can't, you can't take a deep... Keep, um, the, keep, um, keep like I'm that. Protecting. And take a, yeah. Yeah, you, you've already protected yourself. Like, yeah, it's a shield. It's a shield. We're in, we're in, that position is from military drumming. Yes. So, so, so you know, you, it came from yeah, yeah. the idea of, I, I need this over here because I think I've got, the weapon would be on the other yeah. side. So it's like, it's all for, about yeah. weaponry and... We don't, well... Listen, we, I, you, you don't Einstein. carry knives now as a drummer. <laughs> well, some do. <laughs> some I do, guess. yeah. Okay. Some have to. <laughs> some have to, yeah, it depends on, some, some I've played some terrible gigs, gigs out there. Yeah, I've yeah. played some rough gigs. Yeah. <laughs> they, they, at the door they yeah. go, have you got a knife? And you go, no, and they go, you'll need this one. <laughs> Take mine. The chicken wire. The chicken wire. The, yeah, I've been yeah. there. I've literally, uh, separate podcast. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, having, Einstein said you, you, can't solve, you can't solve new challenges with old solutions. Right, so sure. That's a big proponent of like, let's, let's be an ally of your body language right check out the open-handed even if it's right I, I, yeah actually i never i never uh i never made that connection That's yeah cool. it just, just technically it seems to... a much better way of i mean and part yeah. of it the part of the reason why you, you're teaching that is is the economy of movement as well definitely yeah it's like you, you you're ready yeah to be around the rest yeah. of the kit it's freedom right yeah it's right freedom. uh yeah i never thought about it as a way of I'm protecting my vital organs right. and I'm versus sternum out and, and uh, 
Have you been in a situation where your your training kind of saves you? Like where you're like, wow, this is a high pressure situation. It's Every time. different than I anticipated every time every time i'm so glad i prepped yeah here's what i do is every time i'm uh, and you know i go on sp- and speak a lot in front of large audiences you know you walk out and there's seven thousand people there yeah that's that can be worrying yeah that's <laughs> that can be worrying uh and and all i do is go trust your technique trust your technique mm. just go back to technique Yes. Yeah, just go back to, to technique. The, the, fundamentals. Know, the fundamentals. Go back to those. Go back to those. Cool. Don't You don't need to do anything smart or clever. Yes. You just need to go back to fundamental technique and ah. trust that. Now, you know, and, and you've got you to gotta say that the moment you, you, you walk in front of that audience is go, okay, really, trust technique. Because your brain will go, we've got to do something clever. Is that yeah. the, I was just about to ask that, is that the, uh, the, the uh, the the aggressive part coming out. Like, I could get aggressive. Oh, I've got to. Oh, I've got to show I must stuff show them. I'll show win. them. Yeah. So there's a lot of I mean? there's a lot of so I don't know whether it's the same in in music for you at the moment, but certainly in the speaking world, there's a lot of vocabulary used, which is aggressive vocabulary around performing. Huh. Oh, they 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 killed it. Oh, they crushed. They it. They crushed it. They yeah. killed it. It's very ag- ag- aggressive. Mm. I don't like that vocabulary. I never join in on that. Oh yeah, they're out there killing it, or I'm going to go and kill it. Mm. It's like why? They're, they're the audience. Why do you want to yeah. crush them? <laughs> why do you want to kill them? <laughs> it's like now I can in in music in in other arts, I in certain styles of it, I can totally see the idea of 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 killing the audience, crushing the audience mm. at times mm-hmm, mm-hmm. because there's yes. some really aggressive musical art forms out there yeah. that the audience are enjoying that, yeah. that fight, yeah. That, yeah. That, yeah. that battle. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But that's not every, yeah. you know, if, you, if you're doing a ballad, yeah. <laughs> you really need to, I, I crushed them yeah. with that ballad. <laughs> I like, couldn't be, man. Some, you never know. Yeah, but most ballads. Maybe a rock ballad. It, yeah. maybe, a, <laughs> maybe a hair metal <laughs> yeah, ballad yeah, that's what I could, could do with some crushing. Are you, yeah. Question is good. Are you uh, are you very meticulous with your language of self talk? Because I think this yeah. would be big, man. And musicians yeah. and performing like like oh I better I better get this right or you know I'm big into like yeah self talk. Yeah. So, I, so I don't know whether you've come across uh, growth mindset. Yeah, at Carol all. Dweck. Yeah. Right? So that's there's some great stuff around that that I constantly try and use around. Um, uh, the idea of yet, yeah. So, so uh, you know, I'm not a great Imagine drummer yet. yet. Yeah, I can't do this yet. yet. <laughs> yeah. So, just I think that's one of the most powerful words is the yet. I love that word. Yeah, I haven't I haven't got this rhythm yet. Yeah. I'm not in you know the band I want to be yet. Well, because words can trigger those earlier states that we talked about. Right? Absolutely. Like I better play good. I better yeah, yeah. play perfect today. Yeah. You're in fight or flight. Uh, absolutely. Right? So, fight. so yeah, yeah. is a is an important one for me. The other word is um, is is. So is, you know, um, uh, again locks things, locks locks things down. Uh, yeah. th- this is a drum kit. Okay. Well, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. Uh, but it could be some other stuff as well. And what yeah. if what if we yeah. made it? What if we made it the the guitar? Yeah, yeah. And what if, what if you take the guitar from the guitarist, and that's the drum kit? Yeah. So the the word, the idea of is tends to to limit stuff. Oh. Now that's it's an important word that's because cool. you know we won't be able to walk, walk wake up in the morning if we didn't use is quite a lot. It, you know, it is it is ten o'clock. I need to leave. So it's limiting. It's, it's limiting. It's, uh, and, it's and, fixed. And it's fixed. Yeah. And, and limits are good in some situations and not good in others. And in some areas of creativity, is is not very helpful. Well, you reminded me of, um, oh, I'm forgetting his name, the drummer in uh, uh, Bella Fleck and the Fleck Tones, Future Man. Okay. That's it. Do you okay. know Future I Man? I don't, no. So he plays a guitar, Yeah. but it's, it's a drum set. My fingers are the drum stick. Here, 
is being played live. He's thinking, right. what if? What's the possible? What if? Well, yeah, he's looked at a what guitar if that one the day. Drum kit? Yeah, and he said, yeah. "Hmm, yeah, I could do all this with this." Just like that. <laughs> yeah. I'd have to be, and that's what I, he kind of I, I could eat like less. That. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Burn less calories. Burn less calories. And, but he he just he just sitting yeah. there like this, and you know, yeah. Tuka, 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 tuka. yeah. Why not? Whereas Neil Peart's got the. Yeah, yeah. He's got a. It's uh, you know. You gotta lug that stuff around. Right. right? Yeah, you need you need help. <laughs> you, need help. <laughs> you need you need an assistant. Yeah. Uh, you're awesome, man. This is this is so much fun. I wanna be uh, we can go all day, but let me sure. see if I miss anything here. Oh, any any um actually I wrote something about practicing because I'm mm -hmm. really fascinated with our daily practice. Yeah. And you mentioned rituals yeah. and and getting yourself in a state. Uh as I've done with Lex many times, it's like we talk about getting yourself used to uncomfortable situations right, right, too. Right, right, right. Yeah, sure. And making sure your state is good. Yeah. Uh, I guess you're not dependent on the environment. Yeah. You know I think there's all, for all kinds of things. Yeah, I think... Like you could speak in any old, you know, is it a rainstorm or like I'm sure you could do your thing. Yeah, so, so, so there's lots of... When you, when you go into tricky situations, they're tricky because you don't know what's going to happen. That's why most people don't... Do, mm -hmm. You know, most people are not public speakers. Why? Because they just don't know what's going to happen. What I'm trying to do is 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 uh, limit the amounts of don't knows, ah. so that when oh, cool. when yeah, the, yeah, when the yeah. not knowing comes across, I'm ready to be adaptable yeah. to see it and go. Okay, we don't know what's happening here. Let's watch really carefully. Let's be adaptable. Now, in order to do that, I need to know some stuff for sure. Like I need to know exactly what I'm wearing. Mm. I don't want to have my mind going, oh, I don't know if I wore the right thing. It's like, that's what I wore. That's all I'm going to wear. So eliminate. So now I've eliminated the not knowing if I think I'm dressed correctly. I like put the stuff on and go, that's the best it's going to be. Mm. I now don't think about that mm. anymore. Um, don't but, waste thought and focus. Right. And don't waste focus on stuff that you could sort mm -hmm. out yeah yeah, yeah that yeah. could just be done with make a decision yeah make a decision on that and then be done with it mm -hmm. and keep to that mm. decision mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. otherwise the mind is going to be overwhelmed i mean that's got to be stuff like you know making sure your kit is in good order like <laughs> you know how many times have you not had your kit in good order and it's starting to fall to bits and you're like yeah. this is like I'm trying to play the music, yeah, and my whole wanna... kit is falling to to bits. You'd rather not have that, for sure. I, I yeah. think of the the, <clears throat> the military; they get you, you know, take apart your gun, put right. it back. Isn't it with a blindfold? Right. On? It's like sure. Uh, so, do you know your gear? Right. And is it? Yeah. Is it right? Do you know your order? gear? And, and and is it in good? Good order. Is it in good order? Eliminate that. Eliminate the. Yeah. Yeah. That that you're on stage going well. What if my symbol stand falls to bits? You don't want to. Yeah. You're going to want to go. I know it won't. If it does, yeah, it's an anomaly, and yeah. I'll be able to adapt to that. Yeah. yeah, but it's most likely that won't be the thing that I'm trying to deal with. Yeah, <laughs> you know, because in a in you know what acoustic environments are like. You move from one acoustic environment to another, and it's now like. I now can't hear the guy who I normally oh, I'm able it's to It's completely hear. different, yeah. Now you may be trying to manage that. Yeah, yeah. And the difference between sound check and then getting the audience <sighs> in. It's like, ah, oh, yeah, we sound checked without having this. Why even do huge, it? Why even bother? <laughs> <laughs> like, you should just it's get the audience thing. in and go, okay, <laughs> first thing you're going to hear <laughs> is, is a sound check because we're just trying to work out now how this acoustic works with you guys in here. That happened to me on a gig and it was I was not experienced. Right. And, uh, I might have told you guys this story. And uh, it was so, yeah, sound check was cool. And we're like, yeah, this is going to be awesome. And then we did the gig and it was just like, woof, woof, woof. And I was like, where? And we got lost. And then it was literally a train wreck. Right. And this was the gig where a cat had peed in the bass drum. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of, of, yeah. The, of the house kids. Yeah, so yeah. there was that too. There was the, yeah. An, an anomaly. The, the cat urine smell. The cat urine smell. <laughs> Along with the, so I, yeah, I wasn't able to adapt. And uh, 
I wasn't, yeah, I was dependent too much on Yeah. The well, and there's some like interesting that. kind of sonic stuff can happen when those sounds kind of mash up. I know if I go oh. to gigs where I don't know the music, yeah. I sometimes can't pick out the tune. Yeah. Because because my, my, there's so much yeah. um, uh, resonance yeah. happening is that my brain doesn't know where the root note is. Yeah. So it doesn't know what, what, what notes to pick as being the, the tune or the harmony or... Yeah, it's a massive... It's just a massive... Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> my brain just goes, oh, you can't, you can't listen to this. I sometimes have to just shut off. Yeah. And just go, it's cute. Okay. Just, I just know <laughs> I the Because there is no tune. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there is one. It's just, I don't know what it is. Yeah. I know what you mean. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's, that's amazing, man. I heard something with, uh, like when you're public speaking, say, mm-hmm. or you're, you're a musician in an audience. Yeah. Or, and, and very few people get away from being in public somehow. Sure. <laughs> I mean, sure, sure, sure. It could yeah. be at work and you got to talk to your coworkers. Right, yeah. It's the communication is whether it's through drums or through anything. So having eyes look at you, yeah, and and like you said, past four sets of eyes, it's right. like the brain. And there's something like, you know, those cartoons with like eyes in the bushes, and it's you know, the, is there some is does that trigger uh, the limbic brain? Like, say you're in an audience, all those eyes are looking yeah. at you. Does your limbic brain well, think the, it's predatory? Yeah, because you're the target. Yeah, okay. the eyes are used to, to target. We target things eye of value. Contact, eye right? contact yeah. is about target. Yeah. So if I'm looking at you, I'm suggesting to you that you are the target of this. You'll now mm. look at the rest of my body language and go, has Mark targeted me in a pleasant way or an unpleasant <laughs> way? Like, am I going to be the victim here, yeah. or am I going to be given something, you know, valuable? Yeah. So you're looking at the rest of the but. But when you look out at an audience. All you see is their eyes looking at you and you can't see the rest of their body. Right. So you go, I, I don't know whether they love me or hate me. I know, let's go with they hate me. Re- revert to negative. Right. Negative, negative because bias. I would rather be inaccurate today and safe right. rather than because tomorrow I can be accurate. Yeah. Now, tomorrow <laughs> they've gone and it's another bunch. I've survived. So you just, yeah. you just get into the same, yeah. the same pattern. Cool. So, uh, you know, again, one of the things you have to do is countermeasure this yeah. by by going. When I see those eyes on me, I'm going to do open body language. Mm. I know whether I, I feel to, whether I feel yeah. I'm just gonna I'm mm. gonna on purpose go. This could be really risky <laughs> opening myself, but I'm going to do it on purpose. But again, it has to be that a conscious decision. You are yeah. using your conscious mind, but it's a really simple decision. Yes, open or closed. Open. Yes, I'm going open. On, ba- it's on barely this. conscious because it's, it's barely, practice. but it's a simple thing. Yeah, yeah. like you're not going to get confused about yeah. open or closed. Yeah, yeah. Whereas you will get confused about. I know. Tell myself <laughs> that I was really good at the gig a month ago. Yeah, <laughs> it's like it can't even remember that. What month ago? Like, what did they yeah. look like? Yeah, that that's too complex. Yeah, open is really easy to do. It uses big muscle groups as well. Yeah, you don't want to do anything with small muscle groups. Like I know, you know, go on and smile. You can't, you can't, there's 50 uh, muscles in the face. You'll never control that under stress. Your arms, you totally can. Yeah. Oh, you totally can. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So, so, you know, when you see that audience and those other band members, think about the, the, the open body language and just see, you know, you can see when you instantly do it, you take yeah. in this. It's natural. <laughs> like you, you take in the oxygen. Mm. When you close off, I bet you exhale. So that's an interesting one for breathing is inspired and expired. Mm. So at the moment, I'm, I'm on an in-breath at the moment as I'm talking to you. Yeah. I mean, it's no, it doesn't mean that I'm, I'm talking while I'm breathing yeah. in. Yeah, it's yeah. just I'm, my lungs are expanded. Right. I'm going to go on to a, an out-breath now mm. and remain on that out-breath as ah. I'm talking to you. And you probably see that there's kind of a light that's going from my, my eyes. Yes. Yeah? Again, I'm doing this on, <laughs> on purpose. Now I'm going to go onto the in-breath again and stay on that. I mean, obviously I'm breathing in and out, oh, else cool. I die, but just that, so this that's is neat. inspired and therefore will be inspiring. And I want to mirror you, by the way. Right, I've, I've, so you, I've yeah, yeah, you start to mirror because I'm being really clear. I'm not that and then yeah. this and like, you'll stop mirroring that quickly because you just, that's just confusing. Oh. So I'm, I'm leading your body language by being really clear with mine. Yeah. And it has a very important effect on the levels of oxygen and carbon dioxide in my bloodstream. Yeah. So this will feel more inspiring and this will feel expired, mm. i.e. dead. Eh. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Rock and roll. <Yeah. laughs> it's like this is awesome. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Uh, yeah, I always talk about like like owning the song. And my, my teachers all said to me, like, relaxed intensity. And that's what we've been talking about yeah. this whole time. Yeah. If you could, right before you go, yeah. uh, I want you to look at body language of a drummer. Oh, yeah, okay. Just tell me what, what do you, I don't know, what's your impression from this? So let's, let's go, let's go Stuart Copeland. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so he's hitting a gong. Hammering a gong there. And he's going like hey, this. Um, like, that's the celebration, that's yeah. the victory pose. Yeah. He starts off in victory. Yeah. Even before it, and say, yeah. I am the victor. Yeah. And Yeah. Uh, there's a, he's got a slight smile on his face as well. Yeah. So that's, you know, he's enjoying, that's he's enjoying so cool. that as well. But yeah, what comes across most to me about that is that Confidence. victory pose ah. there beforehand. Yeah. Um, but then the, what's interesting is this flicking thing that he, um, imagine he's, mm. it's like he's, he's throwing paint. Yeah. Like, <clears throat> yeah. Yes, not stabbing maybe, but yeah. almost. Like I've seen, uh, was it Ringo who seems oh, to no, kind of just kind one. of windshield yeah. wipes? It's just like I'm just you know, yeah. flicking some water around and the and the head. Uh, yeah, and the head going. Uh, yeah. yeah, completely it's great. different. So there's uh, this great. You look at some drummers and you can see there's, there's some some metaphors in terms of what their body is doing. Like yeah, he's, he's like splashing. Oh, cool. Paint everywhere. Ringo's just kind of wiping. Yeah. Having a great day wiping stuff. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. So this is Carter Beaufort, Dave Matthews Band. Okay. Uh, what I get from him is like he exudes joy. Actually, sorry. I'm going to go to Yeah, Carter, me just like exudes he sends off a very joyful vibe right uh and i noticed many non-drummers you know that like dave matthews band just uh, almost like a magnet oh, kind of bouncy yeah it's right so that for me is he's got this sense in his arms of cool it's like we're just we're just we're just taking a walk <laughs> yeah stick around man. yeah licky musty man yeah Cross and stick. It's got a bit of tension in his, in yeah. his mouth. Yeah, 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 yeah. But the rest of the body is just like, I'm just walking along the beach. Uh, nothing, nothing amazing happening here. Yeah. So it feels like he's being very relaxed around what we can see here, which is incredible technique. <laughs> but he's very focused and uh, accurate. Yeah. I like most liquor, but I don't like gin. I don't always like the skin. He's got this upward little head thing that he's doing here. Yeah, 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 yeah that's what it, that's correct. Yeah. But, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm just playing correctly. Very <laughs> like, nice smile there. A lot of economy and like this very loose in the body, but it's not really moving. Yeah. I mean, it's all in his, like how he's really is. And an open-handed uh, He's a bite in the lip, too. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, is this going right? Yeah, is this going lip suppressor. It's like, I've got to stop the excitement. Whoa. Get out of control. Like, he's, he's, where does he go? He's keeping control of himself. He's going, I got it. Got to keep control of this. Uh, well, yeah, it's not a runaway. It's, it's order, not a runaway chaos. Got, yeah, it's order and, okay. ca order and chaos. Because emotions can be, if they're not contained in some way yeah. can get utterly chaotic and very dangerous to be around whether it's sadness or joy or imagine somebody joyful mm. and cannot contain it in any way mm. well they'd be all, all over the place there's nothing wrong with that it's just that's kind of like stop. kids actually yeah. <laughs> oh, like, oh, 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 okay. like, stop right you'll hurt yourself literally yeah. you know you'll hurt yourself you'll trip well i'm excited yeah. maybe you'll trip over and hurt yourself yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so i'll yeah. worry sometimes I'll, I'll worry is like i don't think i can manage 
hmm. this level of emotion being expressed. Because what if I started to mirror it and do it? I'd, I'd tear the place up. That's a big part of drumming, man, right? Right. Like, I'm uh, in it. Yeah, aggressive, sad, whatever, soft. Right. But if I go too far, it'll I'll lose the control on it. Right. We well, won't be in a band anymore. Be a solo, yeah. You'll be yeah. a soloist, yeah. which could be really... It could be really good, wow. but calm, but man. you have to you got to contain it and channel it for the for the for the music and for the audience. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a big part of it, man. I've I felt well. Speaking of which, Neil Peart. Yeah. There we go. Now, story about him. His his mom asked him once, "You don't look like you enjoy playing drums." Right. And he said, "Mom, this is the only face I can make." Because I'm playing to the absolute edge of my ability. Like, right. it, I'm, it's almost going to fall, fall Right, apart. it's athletic. It's, it's athletic, yeah. It's athletic. Yeah. 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 And he would never... Well, I think he smiles kind of at the end of certain songs. It's, it's rare to see Neil Peart smile. Yeah, I mean, it's very, there's... It's, it's surgery. It's surgery. Right. He's a, you're right. He's, a, he's even got the surgeon's is, cap on. Right? Yeah. Like, absolutely accurate. This is brain surgery. Yes. Yeah. Give me a lot stake scalpel. Here. A lot yeah, of stake. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Every second count. Yeah, it's, but there's, there's, there's a sense of accuracy. Yeah. You're right. It's, it's very... Here's my take on it. Is it feels very crafty. There's a lot of craft. I'm not sure for me where the artist is. Oh. I'm not sure, like looking at him, I'm going, um, I don't know. I kind of go, yeah, but I think somebody else could probably play that as well. Mm. Well, I, I think of him as a craftsman and I know with right. him, he's, he's tried to, uh, in his career, let that improvisational free spirit come right. out more through studying jazz and stuff. Right. And, not just be uh, too methodical, I guess, right. and, and like uh, perfectionistic. Yeah. But definitely a surgeon and a craftsman. So right? if <laughs> it seems so exact yeah. that my fear is if he did that tomorrow, it would be exactly the same as he did today. Oh, yeah. He, that, he, Whereas when I look at Stuart goal. Copeland, yeah. I kind of go, well, who knows what's going to happen? Yeah. Who knows what's going to happen? Yeah. Good. Well, and he's, he's kind of known for like, uh, when drummers are in the audience watching him, right? They they famously air <laughs> they, they, they can play along. Yeah, and and they're literally he will not change the parts. So okay. you get all the drummers in the audience like, right? So isn't that so? I the part. you know I'm not I'm not a fan of the the band at all. I don't know anything about him. But how, how easy is it to, for me to accurately go? Yeah. I bet it's the same. My worry is it's the same every day. Yeah, and I'm right. Well, He's that's actually trying to make it yeah, the same. Every correct, day. yeah. 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 Now know. that's either, you know, in terms of music, that's either something you like or you don't like. That's either to your taste or not to your, mm -hmm. to your taste. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, but certainly it's not so much to my yeah. to my taste. Yeah. Because yeah. it does feel a bit like watching a surgeon. Well, Stuart would be try air drumming to his. Uh, right. And even John Bonham, too. Like when you hear the, the live Zeppelin stuff, it's like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Keith Moon. Try, Keith, try, yeah. try following. And there's no, I, yeah. I'm, I'm oh, well. absolutely sure he has had no idea what was going on. He either. didn't even know either. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the great, the great joy of it. It's like, this it. guy doesn't know what's going to happen next. Yeah. Well, speaking of, I mean, this is Tony Williams, and he, this is probably my favorite drummer of all time. Uh, he definitely, he, you'd see him make an angry face. Right. Because he, he just pushed himself to the edge of his ability and not going to know what's going to happen. And sometimes he'd not play something as well as he thought he would and he'd just scowl at himself. Right. Tony, you never knew what was going to happen. Notice that he played really big sticks. Yeah. Big drums, a yellow. Yeah. Uh, there seems more, um, seems like a lot of power was coming from his upper, upper shoulders there. Like, compared to the, uh, the guy that we were watching, I can't remember the name of the drummer now, the guy with the smile, very economical. Oh, Curry, Curry, yeah. Yeah. So, like, I don't, 
remember his shoulders moving much at all. Like, this mm. guy's rolling his shoulders, he's launching forward into mm. things, backing off them. Mm-hmm. Physically, kind of way more engaged. And he's the band leader. Right. So he's kind of like, okay, guys, this is what we're doing. Watch this little record. And he's yeah, kind of so looking at. So he's really listening to the music. Ah. He's really listening to, like, he's listening to that trumpet. Whoa. He's kind of. He's going, what, what's going on here? Like, he's, well, you do see him give these guys rocks, like, yeah, yeah. Kind of, yeah, you better. Uh, you know, so, be on this part, it looks to me like, you know, his, his mind feels like it's in charge of all of the instruments. Whoa. Like, he's, he's making that. Play or play. I think that's what, what's going on is he's he's going okay. Make make this play the trumpet. Yeah. Yeah. He's so playing the whole band. Playing the whole band. Wow. Yeah. You know he studied uh, orchestration. He was heavy into it. So that's funny you say that. I think he. And, yeah, a lot of this he would probably compose. So you nailed it. Man. Right. But even when they're soloing, I think he thinks he's playing them. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so last one we can do. Man, I can do this all day. This is fun. Uh, last one, Steve Gad. <laughs> yeah, he's just kind of like, yeah, I'm just hand on the drums. Like, My teacher John he's said. He's slumped over. He's almost like. Like, it wouldn't take much for him to just fall on the drums, would it? Yeah. He's almost... Do you think he's... Like, obviously he's committed, but I just get this, like, ah, it's like I'm giving my whole... He is, like, so soft in his body that it could, you know, melt with the drums. Whoa, yeah, I think he's yeah. kind of... Look how he's almost... He's, he's, I know that it's something about the technique as well, but he's like, almost ah. leaning on those drums. He's being. He's like there are, it's like a. It's like a sofa or a bed that he's. Taking. Yeah. <laughs> he's like crawling into. It, is it a giving state? I like, think it's almost like they're they're helping support him. He's so he's so um, intense that they're supporting him. Yeah. Well, my teacher Dom used to say, "Watch some of your favorite drummers uh, in mute." Yeah. Sure. So you, yeah. you, you you only see their body language, right? Which is kind of like and also, it's, it's like he's, if you put a stick on his head, you could probably play another. <laughs> got a hard hat and put a stick on it. It's like ah. his head is, but it's, yeah, it's there's like a, a counter um, counterpoint happening in his in his head. Steve said something interesting once. He said, uh, "I like playing when I'm tired." Like you meant, it's funny how you caught on that. Yeah, it's yeah, like I'm jet lagged. Yeah, 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 like, oh, what is it? It's not play to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Whereas he said, like, when I'm well rested and fired up, right. I don't play as well like that. Well, you know, it is interesting when you when you use your use your instinct and judgment around seeing that these bodies moving this way, how yeah. close you are to. to what they want, yeah, 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 yeah. The, the, the body becomes symbolic of what's happening in their in their mind. But the great yeah. thing is, is you can copy this. Like you can try this out. Like, it's, yeah, I can see yeah. how it works. See how it works. Yeah. It's like, what, what's that? What's or that a little bit of each. Uh, a little bit of each. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like take the same, take the same groove, mm-hmm. and see what happens when you choose a different. You know, your favorite drummer's body. Yeah, which, that's a little trick that I've, yeah. I've used. Uh, I, I'm almost like an act, like I'll, I'll reference certain drummers. Right. Like, oh, it's a Questlove kind of <laughs> yeah. layback. And then, yeah, it's a more uh, right. Stuart Copeland kind of right. thing here. So it isn't yeah. just a, a set of um, rhythms. It's an attitude. Yes. And, you know, playing playing drums like Stuart Copeland isn't just the, the things he chooses to yeah. play. It's, it's, it's the, the attitude body. and the yeah. body. Yeah, yeah. 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 Which means that awesome. that you can play with somebody's attitude and, and body, but not necessarily play their their groups. Ah, that's better to me. Yeah, because you're 
well, you might come up with something better than that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's quite likely yeah, you'll. Cool. So what's interesting is, it's, if you do that, you're quite likely to surprise yourself a bit more. Mm. I mean, you, you must have done that when mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. I've certainly done it when I've been recording music and recording. I've, I've played, we played it back, and I've gone, yeah, I couldn't do that again. I don't yeah, know. Yeah. Why. I don't know. <laughs> you basically go, I don't know how I managed to do that. Yeah. You. That's that's a great moment when you actually surprise yourself. Yeah, that's really and you can probably really surprise cool. yourself more if you're choosing other people's bodies. Yeah, it's, it sparks yeah. something. Yeah, yeah, I know what you mean. Oh, that's awesome! Cool, man. Thank you, Mark. My pleasure. You helped me and and other drummers and people listening to this. And life is about communication. Drumming is about communication, and uh, the whole LTR life through rhythm is yeah. like as we are as people that goes into our drums, and as we are you know, as drummers that carries into our life too. So. That's uh, exactly what we're doing cool. here. So. Thanks for letting me be a part of this. Awesome. Thank you, Mark. Yeah. Uh, you got the new book? Yeah. Yeah, Truth and Lies, what people Truth are really Truth and Lies. Thinking. I've read it. It's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Uh, I was thinking a drummer lens throughout the whole thing, and there was so much I got out of it. And yeah, thanks for doing what you do. Pleasure. Awesome.